How many of you have heard of vanity metrics? If not, I'm sure you have at least heard of key performance indicators or KPIs. In marketing, we use KPIs to show our clients incremental progress that support the success metrics set at the beginning of any campaign. These metrics should always be tied to revenue or at least profit. If they aren't, we call them vanity metrics. And unfortunately, they are used way too often in many facets of business to either prop up mediocre performance or make a business owner feel good. So today, we are going to take a look at how to avoid these vanity metrics and ways to stay on course with KPIs that consistently move the revenue needle. To help me dive in is my friend, Jason Sircone, a podcast guesting strategist. Let me say it again. Jason Sircone, a podcast guesting strategist, author, and experienced podcaster. He helps value-driven coaches and consultants establish authority and become thought leaders in their niche through impactful podcast guest appearances. He shares my disdain for vanity metrics, so he's my perfect wingman for this topic. So welcome to the show, Jason. Buzz, thank you so much for having my friend. This is going to be a big throwdown today. Let's put to rest <laughs> this love of vanity metrics and make the world understand why they pretty much suck. <laughs> well, well, I mean, let's dive right in. Why do you have such a dislike for vanity metrics? Well, for me, I mean, I I'm working in the podcast space and I've been podcasting for almost eight years now. And I feel one of the biggest reasons why so many podcasters start a show and then walk away within seven to eight episodes, which is the average, which is totally scary. Isn't that crazy. You're just getting started, right? Like you can't learn anything in that time frame. And I always, I mean, there are a number of reasons that come into play, but I always feel one of the biggest is people are looking at their metrics right out of the gate mm. and they're expecting some huge mm -mm. blown up inflated download number just because they have a podcast now. And that doesn't <laughs> build happen. it and they will come. Right. What are you like, talking about? That's how you're doing it. This websites are the same way. You just build it. Everybody it, it, it is the worst bill of goods possible. So you start looking at this metric wondering, well, why isn't anybody showing up to listen to my show? Well, this isn't worth my time. And then you walk away. And it's a very backwards way of thinking about what you're building when it comes to building a podcast. I see it on the guesting side, too. People want to be on shows that only have 50,000 downloads. And it's a completely backwards. That was a, obviously just a big number to throw out okay. there. But it's like, really, wow. <laughs> no, like people will say they want to be on these enormous shows, but there is a yeah. lot of value in the smaller audiences as well, especially right. if your message is targeted and the audience is showing up to listen to what you're an expert in. Oh, if you have an engaged audience, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I, so I remember when we, I mean, we just started this show less than three months ago. Mm -hmm. Or actually, by the time we aired this one, it'll be three months. So we started in September of 2022. And um, I remember the first uh, episode getting five downloads. And I was like, oh, yeah. no, what have I done wrong? Right? <laughs> and luckily, I have a coach that is, is helped me manage my expectations. So it wasn't huge, but a little bit of an ego shock. You know, like I have 16,000, you know, a reach of about 16,000 in my social media realm and, and a pretty engaged audience. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, only five of you? Really? <laughs> And that first month was bad. I mean, well, but, you know, and the second month new. was great and stuff like it's, that. It's, yeah, it's it's brand new and it does. It keeps getting better and better because when more people show up because you keep showing up for them with this quality content that they can sink their teeth into, they're going to not only binge the rest of the catalog, they're going to tell others to do the same. And that's how you grow. But if you right. don't keep coming at them with this consistently good, consistently improving content, Mm -hmm. there's no way to know how big you can get. And again, so many people throw in the towel because they look at that download metric, which for me is on the subject of vanity metrics. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot of things about your show, but if you're looking at it right out of the gates, it's going to completely throw you off your game and take your attention away from where it needs to be. And that's on building valuable content that your audience can fall in love with. So let's let's talk specifically about podcasts, and we'll get into some other things like social media and website and stuff like that in a second. But let's talk about the actual 
tangibly measurable and profitable metrics when we're dealing with either hosting a podcast or guest speaking on a podcast. I've personally been on about a hundred podcasts and have uh, at the airing of this show around 35 hosted podcasts. Mm -hmm. So about 130 in what for either one of the sides of that coin, what are good metrics to measure in podcast? You know, it's a, it's a loaded question. I don't focus a lot on actual numbers. I, what I'm focusing on when I'm making guest appearances, like connecting with you today, Buzz, and having this great mm -hmm. conversation is bringing value to the table so we can talk about a subject, we can really dig in. So when the listeners hear it, they're impacted. Mm -hmm. And to me, so my, it's, it's, it might be a little bit of a cop-out answer, but my <laughs> saying is impact one person. That's my biggest metric. And again, not exactly answering your question, but I always want to impact one person with everything that I do. Mm -hmm. Because if I can feel comfortable at the end of the day, knowing that someone had some new perspectives, they learned mm -hmm. something, they were able to bring transformation to their life just because mm -hmm. I gave them a point of view that they may not have thought about before. I've done my job. And I, I think I will agree with you altruistically. Value, that is great. Can't measure yeah. it. We don't know right. unless they like, you know, they write into us and say something. Yeah. So, so say you have a guest speaker. I mean, you have, you coach people in being mm -hmm. guest speaking on podcasts. And I love yeah. that. I mean, that's one of the reasons I had you on the show because I want people to understand that guest speaking is actually probably easier. I, I yeah. feel it's easier and can be more impactful to your business um, as being a guest versus a host. Right. Absolutely. So we can't just be on a hundred podcasts and not measure anything. Right. right. I mean, right. unless we're just considering it part of our charity, right. Mm -hmm. We're giving our time to the ether and we're putting that energy out there and we don't care whether, how it comes back to us. We just know it will in some way. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else besides that? It, when somebody utilizes guest speaking as part of their marketing strategy. Absolutely. I think there, there's more to it than what's on the surface. When you think of a podcast guest appearance, a lot of times people think, well, I'm, I'm going to go on this show, whether they have value in mind. That's one thing. Cause some people will just go on a podcast and go into sales mode and try to sell their course, sell their book. And they don't really bring value to the table. They're just treating it as a sales pitch. Those right. don't tend to get over or sometimes not even get aired because wow. some podcasts producers may hear that and go like, well, my audience isn't going to want to listen to a half hour sales pitch and mm -hmm. it ends up on the editing room floor, but it happens. Oh, I, sure. I, I've done it. I've done it. I've, I've walked away and said, you know what? We're just not going to hear that. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and it's, it's unfortunate because it wastes everybody's time. So right. when you're utilizing podcast guesting as a true strategy to build your brand, to enhance your presence, to get the word out there, you have to have the proper process in place that allows you to maximize your ROI. And the mm -hmm. best way to do that, obviously bringing value to the show or to every show that you make a guest appearance on is critical, but you have to come in with the mindset that maybe the host is someone that could benefit from your services and your products. Maybe mm -hmm. they have people in their circle that they could introduce you to. And since you just help them build a great piece of content that they can share with their audience and use to build their show, maybe they're willing to introduce you to some people who could use what you have. You just have to ask the questions and come into it the right way. And it's not coming in with a sales mindset. It's coming in with a value mindset. 100%. So, so, you, could, so you could leverage these opportunities as high-level networking that could lead to new opportunities the second your interview ends, not just when the interview goes live. Right. That content is built to impact the audience when they hear it, but you can mm -hmm. also impact people beforehand just by mm -hmm. treating the experience the right way. And that's one of the big things that I preach is each guest appearance is not just about the interview. That's just one piece of the puzzle. You need to show up with value in mind, be an asset to that podcaster, respect what they want to accomplish because they're looking to grow their audience and they need powerful content to do that. Mm -hmm. They see something in your expertise that says, I can have this person on my show and it's going to help me grow. Mm -hmm. So if you come on and you fill that accomplishment, you, you fill that expectation for that podcaster, they'll mm -hmm. do all the selling for you. Mm -hmm. They'll tell their audience that when the show goes live, you need to go check out what Buzz is, what mm -hmm. Buzz is cooking because he's got something good for you. 
Right. But if you come at it just thinking, okay, I've got to sell this person today. I'm going to sell the audience and blah, 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 blah. The right. message gets lost in translation, even if, if, if it ever gets heard, as we said before. Yeah. So I remember that, when I was- you in my man. Oh, yeah. I remember when I started guest speaking, it was to, to sell a book. Sure. Right. And the book in, you know, when it really comes down to is just enough information for people to get started. And I want it to have impact on that. But it really is that, you know, it's part of that, what you were talking about, the authority building, right. Mm -hmm. And adding value. And so it's just an ad, a value add. So talking about the book, it's so funny. I had hosts to be like, well, I don't want you to give all the secrets away. I was like, I'll give you everything in the book. You give yeah. me an hour to talk about my book. I will give you all of the things you need to know. You don't even have to read the book if you don't want to. Right? right. I don't care. The whole point of the book is to get that information in people's hands yeah. because it's it's it goes back to uh, Dr. Dr. Ivan Meisner, the founder of uh, Business Network International. I don't know if you've ever heard of BNI. Mm -hmm. um, I was in that for a long time. And that his whole concept and his first book was Giver's Game. And this Giver's Game mentality is the uh, mindset of abundance. Right. Yeah. You just keep giving. If you, if you give selflessly, I equate it to drafting in like NASCAR. Right. When you're driving really fast forward and you're and you're the one cut in the wind, the people mm -hmm. behind you, you're creating this draft. So anybody that gets behind you, you're actually pulling them along. Mm -hmm. And I feel I feel that the more I give, the more I'm in that pole position of giving, I'm going to create that draft and it will come and, and, and we'll all get to be pulled along with it. So I'm good yeah. with that. Right. Absolutely. And I think that the the whole concept of the higher level networking where it's like, hey, here, let me help you build your audience they're going to have this sense of like how can i help this dude who just helped my show he right. just selflessly yes. helped my show without pitching his his wares and yep. you know pushing his website and getting in the down all that other stuff. so yeah that net that high level networking of a bunch of people who are in bought into the giver's gain i think is a huge deal and i think in podcasting that is I, I, one of the reasons I think that people do walk away after only being on 10 shows as a guest or yeah. hosting 10 shows because one, they don't have the right strategy and then two, they have the wrong mindset. So yeah, yeah. totally get that. And I'm going to put, I'm going to make sure that everybody has your, uh, uh, URL because that's what you do. You help people be good guests. So I want people exactly. to know Jason is the guy to help you be a great guest. It took me a long time. I didn't know Jason when I started. Um, <laughs> I met him as a guest. And so we've become friends over the, over the year. But, you know, if I had some of the shortcuts that you teach your folks, I'd probably be even further now. Right. So mm. what are let's get past podcasting. What are some of the biggest vanity metrics you see business owners fall, uh, fall for or maybe even just make bad decisions from? I think we we are just trained to think, or and, and I don't even know if this was the intention of the social media creators when they put these websites out there. The likes, the retweets, the what what are what are the other the oh we got shares shares got yeah like I mean you know you all, emojis all, and all that good comments yeah and we get so wrapped up in. Every single post that we put out there has to have this high number. It, it had we, and if it didn't get this arbitrary number, because at the end of the day, it is arbitrary, unless you put a post out there saying that has to get a hundred likes or it's not mm -hmm. successful. Right. You end up staring at that number, waiting for it to tick up instead of focusing on the real value that you're putting into that content. Mm -hmm. And to me, I, I don't necessarily want to call it reverse engineering the process, mm -hmm. but I, I, and I'll, I'll draw a podcasting parallel to this and then we can apply it to everything. You get better at what you're doing as you go forward. And the more consistency that you put into the world and the more value that's built into that, mm -hmm. it's going to impact the audience and that audience will continue to grow. As 100%. I said with podcasting before, if you're focused on download metrics in the first few episodes, more than likely you're going to derail yourself and what you're costing yourself is this opportunity to get better at your craft, right? Works the same way with social media, with mm -hmm. website content, with video marketing, you name it, mm -hmm. anything where there is a potential vanity metric tied to it. You can't let that number dictate how you perform and how you get better at what you're doing, how you, you show up. Exactly. You have to believe in your message. And if you dial in that messaging and keep building upon it, and putting content into the world that is focused towards the right audience. You have your, your, your 
customer avatar, your client avatar, whatever you want to define it as. Mm -hmm. If you keep putting the right content in front of them, you're going to hone in that message even tighter mm -hmm. and it's going to become much more fluid. You'll be able to talk with much more confidence as you put that message into the world. Mm -hmm. And over time, those numbers will naturally grow. Mm -hmm. But going back to why we hate vanity metrics so much, if we're looking at that right out of the gates before we've really gotten good at our craft, it mm -hmm. can completely throw us off our game. And then we say, well, no one cares what I have to say. Right. And you retreat. And you that imposter syndrome sinks in and you're yep. like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm nobody cares. Nobody likes me. Everybody exactly. hates me. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, we, we, if we're trying to impress this huge, massive audience, it's, it's the wrong way to think. We're trying to, you know, talk with podcasts. Well, we want to be on shows as big as Joe Rogan's. Cool. You want to sit with him for three hours and just, I mean, can you hang? Do you have any experience? Do you have three hours of content to talk about? Because <laughs> right. I'm telling you right now, not everybody has three hours no. of stuff to talk about. <laughs> no, not at all. And and that's the mindset that many people think because it's that big show is the, that's going to be the answer. And then you disqualify yeah. all of the smaller opportunities that could lead to something big collectively. Oh, so, heck yeah. It's it, so, yeah. It, it, it's still a numbers game. I think that sure. likes and shares and comments, I mean, the algorithm is there. But there are people out there um, that talk about social selling, right? You, at the end of the day, a like does not drive your revenue needle, period, end of story. So when you, we talk right. about social media, we've got to stop looking at how many people like things, right? Mm -hmm. And even some of the social media consultants out there, um, God bless you, you use those because they are early indicators of success. But- if you have say a thousand likes on a post and nobody is doing anything to like DM you or maybe, um, you know, reach out to you through your website or anything like that, guess what? It's a waste of time. It's a blip exactly. in the universe and you have really done nothing to, exactly. to advance humanity, your business, your life or anybody <laughs> exactly else. Right? Right. Like you really <laughs> haven't done all that much right yep. now. Yep. If it's something that people appreciate because you're giving something to the universe as far as content goes and it's free, and you got a bunch of likes that that's still a vanity metric people that's making you feel good about giving mm -hmm. right when we give and we don't know what it felt feels like for the person getting it that's selflessly giving yeah. right so like we just adopted for christmas this year we adopted five foster children for, and basically for their gifts, we bought them gifts for Christmas. They have their wish list and all the other stuff. And we went shopping. Mm -hmm. We have no idea except how old they were and what gender they were, who they are, where they're at or anything like that. We just know they got these gifts that they wouldn't normally get anything if people like us didn't do it. Right. So the only metric we have is how good it felt to, to wrap those presents and give it to the foster home so that those kids can get it. That's it. Yeah. Right. There are no like how many yays they got every time they unwrapped one of the boxes or anything like that. That yeah. is how you have to approach all of these things. Social media, podcasting, websites. Mm -hmm. One thing that we didn't talk about yeah, uh, is websites. People think traffic mm -hmm. is the metric. Traffic is a KPI. The metric yeah. is conversions. And people yeah. who listen to the show know that what I'm talking about, it's when people reach out to you in a profitable way, meaning that not just grabbing a free download, that's a KPI. That's a, that's an indicator of performance, but the metric mm -hmm. you're, you're actually measuring is when they convert to being an active prospect. And then right. from there closing business and moving that revenue needle. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we could probably go on all day doing this <laughs> right here. So what are the main KPIs and success metrics? Let's just, let's focus on podcasting. Cause that's, that's where your wheelhouse is. What metrics should the audience start paying attention to? Now, I take that back. I apologize. What, beyond podcasting, in business, what are the main KPIs and success metrics that the audience should start paying attention to and how can we track them? Well, I would say, you know, it, it, it's not exactly speaking to a number. In a way it is, and you can easily track this. I can, I do it with a spreadsheet. How many powerful conversations that could lead to that conversion that you spoke of a second ago, Buzz? How many powerful conversations are you having per day? And this, again, it's arbitrary. You can set this to whatever you want. If you want to just have one, cool. My goal today is to have five. I want to have five meaningful, impactful conversations that could lead 
to a potential sale, to a potential new person investing in what I have to offer. It's a little bit woo-woo, but <laughs> it is trackable. And it's probably going to do much more for your efforts and your long-term growth to have these powerful conversations. Now, and as I'm saying, you could do this one-on-one -on -one over the phone, through Zoom, as a podcast guest, as a podcaster, bringing great people on. You're having good conversations if you're doing it right. If you, if you focus on that, I guarantee you, you'll get more from a results standpoint than just putting out a piece of social media content that may get a handful of likes. And again, going back to what we said before, if we're focusing on the likes and the retweets and all of these different things, if they don't produce anything because of that, mm -hmm. all we're just doing is we're creating good content for the world. Yes. And everybody can wrap that in a big bear hug and love the hell out of it. But if it isn't converting at the end of the day, it's mm -hmm. missing the mark. Mm -hmm. So these powerful conversations that you can have in a number of different settings are going to lead to much more for you. And they're going to make you more confident in everything you're doing, too. So you can take that confidence that you're getting from one conversation, maybe apply it to your social media content. It changes your voice to some degree. I think there's more value in having a few powerful, meaningful conversations each day than just by trying to put out a social media post that you think might go viral, right? That's what everybody wants. Make it go viral and everything changes. No. No. That post went viral. Maybe it leads to something in the short term, but long term, it's all in the conversations you have. And it's all in how you make those relationships with people work for you and work with you. There's a lot built into that. And I will throw a big challenge out there for the podcasters listening to our conversation. If you're starting a new podcast or if you're in the middle of one, it could be at any point. Don't look at your metrics for six months. A lot of people can't go six minutes. So go six months without looking at your metrics and instead focus on consistently putting valuable content in front of your audience. I guarantee when you go back and look at that number, of course, it's going to grow because you have more content out there, but it's going to be a different mindset and a different approach for you because you won't be focused on that number slowly ticking up. It's valuable content in front of the right people. And when that content is something they feel they can gravitate to they know it's going to be there for them every single time a new episode goes live that's when they start telling their friends and their family and their colleagues listen to that podcast don't go six months that's my challenge to everyone great and that's the show all right